Oh yeah! It's finally here, baby. Dragon's Dogma 2. Let's check it out. I cannot wait to start dogmaing some. Oh, yikes. Oh my god. What? Oh, bruh! Bruh! What? Oh, no shot. Bro, what the hell is going on here? Yo, what is going on, YouTube? It's your boy Poison. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about the absolute, like, unacceptably ridiculous launch that Dragon's Dogma 2 has had. I cannot believe what we are seeing here. It's like recently, I feel like game companies are just getting like these massive opportunities to do good and, and prove themselves to the game industry. But I, I don't know what's going on. It seems like they just take these opportunities and they're like, yo, Let's take the gamers' asses and just start gaping them, dude. Like, Jesus. Now, currently, if you look at Steam, the game is sitting at only 39 positive reviews with over 11,000 user reviews. Dude, this is probably the worst rated game for, for a game this big that I have ever seen. You know, the reason for this is, like, simply people just can't play the game. The, the performance issues are so terrible that my man Charlie's over here being plunged into a goddamn midlife crisis just trying to create his character. It's absolutely insane. Can I have him doing, like, Spongebob walking on the beach? Oh, no, did I just crash? Why? How does this keep... I can't even get into the game! Third time is the charm. If it happens again, I'm just going to forego making a character and just try and get into the game. Maybe if I'm... Why? Reinstalled drivers. Restarted the computer. Crazy. Crazy. Why? How? How do we still keep getting such dog shit PC ports? It's 2024. 2024 years since the death of Christ. How is this still an issue? Now, apparently some people have actually been able to make a deal with the devil, it seems, and they've actually been able to get into the game. And the worst part about this is that the game itself is actually, like, amazing. Like, look at this gameplay, dude. This is some boner jam shit. This guy's, like, attacking the griffin, getting on its back. It's flying across the world with him on its back. Like, this is sick. But players just can't even get into the game to experience this. It's like, it's just, like, the biggest tease. Like, a slap in the face, dude. Now, I want to preface this by saying, like, obviously, performance issues on a brand new released game are gonna happen it's common like it's that's no reason to you know take up your pitchforks and start going down to the game company and fucking bashing them but like it shouldn't be this common and and and, and this just like widespread it seems like tons of games that i've tried recently that have just come out have just been like so shitty on their releases man like like i don't know like as a dev myself whenever i'm making a product for a client or a company it's like customer satisfaction is always the number one aspect that i go for like before i ever even send the end product to my client it's like i do so much testing to make sure that like there's no bugs it's working for the systems that the client needs it to now obviously for game companies it's a bit different because they have to kind of cater to like so many different setups that gamers have you know and like all this different technology but like you would expect that they would have like some fundamental like level of testing that would make sure that like yeah my product is playable and of quality that i want to put out for the vast majority of the consumers that are going to do it so like for instance like if i'm making a a software for a company and they want it on like you know other systems like like a like a fucking phone or linux like i would code that for windows and then i'd have to get you know like a mobile device to test it on and then i'd have to get you know a linux machine to test it on and make sure that it's all right but it just seems like this is like it seems like the vast majority of people trying to play this game can't even run it on any hardware configuration ranging from low end that you'd expect to see problems on to the high end where people with like 40 series cards can't even run the game and the thing is too is like the game doesn't just only run bad on pc it, i don't know why they did this but on console they have it locked to like a 30 fps frame limit 
but it's an uncapped frame limit. And it's like, why would they do that? Because I don't know if, if you guys know how it works, but when you have an uncapped frame limit, like, so if you have the Hertz on your monitor, which is your refresh rate, if you have like a 60 or 120 refresh rate monitor, that can be nicely divided into 30, you know, like 120 divided by four is 30, like 60 divided by two is 30. But when you have an uncapped frame rate, what happens is that it doesn't stay at 30. It'll fluctuate between maybe like 30 to 40. Sometimes it could drop down into the twenties. And if you just kept it capped at 30, it would look nice. But because of those fluctuations in the frame weight, like that is what introduces like lag and jittery feeling in your game. So it, it's it's not running proper for PS, like, like for console or for PC. Now I do want to also kind of give Capcom, I, I mean, on the very dim bright side of this, Capcom is aware of the frame rate issues. I mean, how could they not with all the, the, the backlash they're getting about it? And they said here, in Dragon Dogmas 2, a large amount of CPU usage is allocated to each character and dynamically calculates the impact of their physical appearance in various environments. In certain situations where numerous characters appear simultaneously, the CPU usage can be very high and may affect the frame rate, Capcom rep representative told IGN. We are aware that in such situations, settings that reduce GPU load may currently have a limited effect. However, we are looking into ways to improve performance in the future so it's good that they're trying to work on a fix but like i said it's it's almost like they didn't even test this like the game is running mostly on the C cpu it seems like so like even if you ha that's why people that have these like 40 series graphics cards and all that are are just unable to run the game at a decent frame rate and me personally i held off on the game because i had a feeling that this would happen and i know that if i try and run this shit on my 1060 this thing's gonna fucking explode okay now the other thing that kind of irks me here is for those of you that don't know dragon's dogma had a review embargo leading up to the game and that's essentially when like you're not allowed to really put out reviews about the game like actual reviewers it's not it's not too uncommon in the game industry now I still feel things like that are a bit kind of scummy because of what happened here. So essentially, if you don't know, there was an overview of Embargo two days before Dragon's Dogma released, right? Due to that, there was very limited information available about the game, right? And there was no information about any microtransactions going to be included on lease, on release. But guess what we got, fellas? Microtransactions galore just snuck in at the very last moment, folks. Now, we all know microtransactions are nothing new in games, and I mean, it's becoming just straight up commonplace. But I mean, personally, I feel like microtransactions in a single player game are absolutely ridiculous. There is no way that I'm paying 95 Canadian dollars for a video game, and then I have to pay extra money for other shit that you've just optionally taken out of the game because you want to drive more profits from my $95 purchase. Bruh, what is going on? And now I, I, I'm not, I'm not here saying that like all microtransactions are terrible, you know, like if it's just something like cosmetics or something like that, that doesn't actually affect the gameplay whatever dude you, you threw some extra money into the game to support the devs and make your character look cool whatever but my problem is when developers introduce planned inconvenience into their games so that they can introduce some microtransactions to counteract the inconvenience that they've literally placed into their game now you may be wondering what am i talking about when i say that well if you take a look here at the Dragon Dogma's camping gear, right? Oh, camping set. Very cool, very cool. But did you know that this camping set weighs less than the camping set that you can get in-game? It's literally a pay-to-win item. If you buy this camping set for money, you're able to carry more shit in the game because the camping set takes up less weight in your inventory. Another thing that I found was pretty scummy wake stones what the fuck in the game you have to farm these wake stone shard things i i don't exactly know what they're called but essentially it takes three shards put together into one wake stone that you have to grind in the game 
whoa. But if you just throw 139 on the microtransactions here, you can just buy the wake stones without having to grind them out in the game. Ooh, well, isn't that convenient? Another thing, quartz crystals. Do you want more fast travel locations in the game than somebody who didn't pay for an extra port crystal? Boom! There you go. Some more pay to win cause uh, microtransactions for you there. And this one, dude, this is ridiculous. The art of metamorphosis. They're literally they're literally selling you character customization in a single player game. Now, I know that you can actually pay for character customization in the game. I think it's like 500 of the in-game currency or whatever, and you can do it at the major towns, but it's just crazy. Like, this should never be in a single-player game. Like, just just put it into the game and make it free to character customize, dude. Like, I don't know. I don't want to make a little correction here because I know I said game devs, but realistically, like, the these predatory, like, microtransactions don't come from game devs. Like, I don't know a single game dev who's actually passionate about game development that just, like, codes their game and is just like, yeah, I want to... I want to screw over the player, dude. I want to add this, like, artificial inconvenience so that I can just make these, like, microtransactions just to make the game more convenient and try and, like, essentially convince people to pay more money into the game. It's literally just these... Like, it's like the publishers and, like, the, the higher-ups, like in the game companies like that are just trying to like siphon as as much money from gamers these days as they possibly can and quite frankly it's just fucking ridiculous man like this shit's getting out of hand and the last kind of point i want to touch on that kind of like wraps this all up is like dude i don't know who made this decision bro but you can't even start a new game in the game it's just once you create your character one save that's it like, bro, I didn't know I got transported back into the 1990s and I'm playing a Game Boy Color game where I, I can't... Eh, fuck, on Game Boy Color games, you could start a new game. This just doesn't let you start a new game at all. And in fact, to actually start a new game in Dragon's Dogma 2, if you made some kind of character customization issue, pick the wrong class or you want to, you actually have to go into your file. It, it's, the, it's literally the most consumer unfriendly thing ever. You have to go into your directory on your hard drive, find the game ID, delete your save stuff out of there, turn off your cloud saves. Like uh, I'm actually gonna show, I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna show you guys how, how, to, how, to, how to do it. So essentially what you're gonna go do here is you're gonna wanna go to your Dragon Dogma 2 game. Now I don't actually have the game, so I'm going to just show you on Mortal Sin here. So you just go to right click general. There'll be the Steam Cloud option to keep your games in the Steam Cloud. You're gonna wanna click that off. Essentially what that does is that disables the Steam Cloud saving. Now what you're gonna have to do is go into your Steam directory here into your user data um folder and then followed by your actual steam um user id here it'll just be like the long list of numbers and then once you go into that folder you'll essentially see a ton of these things here which are your game data and saves the game id that you're going to want to look for in here is 2054970 and essentially, once you get into that folder, you'll just go into here. There'll be something called win64 underscore save. And essentially, just delete that. That's your save. And now you've deleted your save. You'll go back into your game, uh, start it up. And from there, you'll be able to start a new game. Once you've done that, you go back here, into here, turn on your cloud saves. And from there, you should be able to start a new game. But that... Like, no, no no, one that buys a single-player game should have to do that to start a new game. It's just absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, I really do hope that they're able to kind of quickly solve all these things, maybe even make it, like, not so fucking stupid for the the, the players to, like, create a new game. Personally, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm just waiting to actually buy the game. I bought Dragon's Dogma 1 on Steam uh, during the Steam sale because I wanted to play it through again, and it's been amazing. And I was just, like, waiting to play this one, but... Oh, Jesus, another one of these things. But anyways, that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a like. Oh, bam. And if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good weekend, everyone. Peace.